wanted to kind of dive into divorcing a narcissist. I know, I do know your story and it is a very intriguing one. I've heard it. I've heard you help so many people with all of your insight and your willingness to share all of your insight. And that is such a great thing. And I really, you know, applaud you for everything that you share as a narcissist and just being, you know, forthcoming and an open book basically is what you are. So I really appreciate that. What I haven't heard you talk a lot about is just the whole divorce process as, you know, coming from the perspective of a narcissist. My goal is to help other women who are going through or have gone through something similar to what I went through. And that whole divorce issue totally caught me off guard. In fact, even though it was him who was the narcissist and it was him who was doing the abusive behavior, it was also him who filed for divorce. Honestly, I do know now that before he even filed for divorce, he had left the relationship maybe years before I even of it. I was totally caught off guard. I thought that I was still in a really you know, loving, good marriage and relationship, yeah. and um, I wasn't <laughs> uh, right. until I knew, for sure. So right. what I want to be able to help people with now is just the whole divorce aspect of it like what should a woman expect um, when they are when they have reached the end of their marriage and now uh, that the narcissist spouse is ghosting them like you said or discarding them you know if you can talk first a little bit about that whole discarding part of it like when they like is it because now the narcissist knows that you know and now you know okay i'm gonna rev this thing up and now i'm gonna kick it in that's exactly what i felt at the end my ex my husband now he came home it was like a light switch once i knew once that woman reached out to me and i had hardcore facts that my husband is now he really is a cheater you know what i all what i had suspected for a long time is really coming to light is really like now manifesting itself. like i now i sure enough have that real information that he has cheated and that he is stepping out and that all that crazy stuff that i thought that i was thinking and how he was trying to make me feel or or um, believe like the gaslighting and things like that it really wasn't me it was really him and he really was doing these things so if you can kind of talk about you know when that transition happens and what prompts it in the nar to the narcissist. Yeah, so what prompts it is uh, when the narcissistic person starts to realize that you know who they are. You may not even give it a title, but I know. But when you start realizing, like, hey, Leon, um, I can so I can feel you start to come realize who I am. I feel it, right? The communication starts to dwindle. Um, you start asking me harder questions. You start looking in my eye when we have when you ask me questions. You start saying, "Yeah, we need to talk because you know, blah blah blah, blah whatever." Um, the chemistry starts to dissipate. I you don't know it in the beginning, but you're like, "Wait a minute, he hadn't held my hand in two months, or you know, he hasn't kissed me." You start seeing the little red flags. I know that what I'm doing is wrong, but I. I'm not gonna come through and tell you that I'm cheating or you know I'm starting not to want to be married again, but it shows because my energy level is extremely low. For the most part, women are still in the marriage for the long haul. So you don't you still giving to me, you still giving to the kids, you're still being nurturing, you're still running the household, you still loving and caring. I'm not. I can't hide it because I wasn't that guy in the first place. It's just a matter of time before it starts to come to fruition and it shows up. So that what happens then, I finally got to come clean, but it's something I got to come clean because about that I want. So then <clears throat> really quick, Leon, with you saying that, can I just ask this then, was he always a nar narcissist? Because like often, and I know for myself, I'll say, you know, he turned into a narcissist or he changed into a narcissist, but really he must have, <laughs> Always, all along, right? Certain, certain things will activate it. When you call a narcissistic person out, when you challenge them, when you start realizing that he can't love you, uh, when you start realizing that he's not the man that you, of your dreams, he's not the man that he says that he was, you start to activate a lot of things in a narcissistic person. Jealousy, rage, envy. And you start to see it. And then you, you'll see it in uh, how they treat the kids. Narcissistic people don't like to be the least favorite parent. They want to be the, the best parent, the most favorite parent. But what do they do? They go buy everything. They get toys and all of these things. But the love and nurturing is not there. So the kid's going to always go to mommy. 
the little, especially this little boy. And then we get mad about that. He like a little, a little punk, you know, why you always had him come and lay in your lap and crying? All? No, you know, so we lose connection with our children. That happened to me too. Yeah. So I was just a really rough guy, over the top, overbearing. And so they fight, the narcissistic people will fight for the love or the attention from the kids to pull it away from you. It's not that it's not that they want they want to really be a great parent. Yeah. They want to be a par the kids that think that they're a better parent than mom. And so moving into the divorce phase, they're gonna disappear for a little while, uh, come home later, uh, have more women, texting, whatever in the house, because now the pres divorce proceedings are in, in motion. So as soon as the di divorce proceedings are going in motion, right there, I'm divorced. It ain't no separation. They don't know, well, maybe we'll get back in now. You want a divorce, boom, we're gonna get on pop. Even though it may take a year, I'm divorced right now. And they'll tell other people, yeah, I'm divorced, but not yet, right? And so they, I, started, I started dating uh, immediately, doing everything to satisfy myself. All right, we're getting divorced, cool. This I've been waiting. I get out of the house, I gotta tell you when I'm coming back, I leave when I'm ready. Matter of fact, I'm gonna get me a dog on another apartment. We're getting divorced, right? Boom, so they go into full self-centered mode when the word divorce is mentioned. You go see a switch. They've always been that way, it was just activated by the fact that, you know, divorce, uh, possible oh, child support, alimony, oh, oh hell no, uh, get mad about that. I was super pissed about that. But I had to find a way to do other things to make myself happy. And so um, they want to be the better parent. They're going to show up in court, looking good, sharp, like speaking very eloquent and articulate, and articulate. And so to try to smooth the judge, you know, um, they're going to try to outdo you. They're going to try to make you look like the, the bad person. All of that stuff is going to come out. That's when you start looking at this person like, this is the person I married? So my wife and I, when we went through our divorce, it wasn't that rough. It took 19 months. I was in Japan, I had to go to Japan. They sent me, I didn't want to go, they sent me there. And I was like, all right, so I'm over here, then I get more money so I can pay for my divorce. Boom, 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 boom. Now I'm over here doing my thing, having fun. I'm single, I wasn't single. And so if they put people in jail, they can't for adultery. I should have been in jail a long time ago. You know, being a narcissist, whatever. I should have been in jail a long time ago. And so, yeah, they start turning up and us, but they've always been a narcissist person, just activated by their their ability their, uh, well maybe they're going to lose in a divorce maybe they're going to pay child support alimony but re really what like really fear of the inevitable too kind yeah. of like they know it's falling apart they know it's falling apart and it's like oh oh divorce man but the real thing what happens one of the another thing that narcissist people don't like especially men is that now somebody's going to be sleeping with my ex-wife mm -hmm. and they are not ready for that I can sleep with other people, yeah. you can't. Right. And now that I've been cheating and getting a divorce, now you have seen somebody, hey, we ain't even divorced yet, you cheating. First thing gonna come out of their mouth. Mm -hmm. But I was cheating before we got divorced. I was cheating during the divorce. And now you got somebody, you see me not even, you may not even be sleeping with the man, but he see with somebody else, he gonna think yeah. the worst. Well, and of now, course, because he's doing it, so that's what he can relate to. <laughs> exactly. And they don't like it. He expects you to like it. But when you start dating, oh, you better know how to do it around my kids. <laughs> but what I, about I, a smear cat campaign? I mean, like, I know that with my ex, he had everybody thinking that I was crazy. I mean, literally crazy. Like he told people, I found this out later, that he told all of his circle of friends that, um, you know, you can't come to my house because my wife is She's, cut, she's lost it, like, you know. What is that? <laughs> well, they have to do something. They have to say things to make themselves look like the better person. You know, they have to make themselves feel like they didn't do anything wrong. They have to make themselves think that everything's gonna be okay on their behalf, you know? So they make, them, make themselves believe that, yeah, you are awful, you are crazy, or you are cuckoo, it's not me. But I caused you to act that way you know and so that's why it's okay for me to get this divorce because she's crazy she's lost it like it's kind of yeah. like a, a a way for them to say that it's okay but it's a, it's based on a lie but but it's a lie that we believe and so we never revisit it because we know that it's a lie so if i if i tell a lie 
and I believe it and I make you believe it, I'm going to leave it right where it is because now we're moving forward based on the line, whether regardless of what it is. And so I put it so far out of my, out of my mind. I suppressed so much that to me, it wasn't a lie. It had to happen, but it was a lie. But I'm not going to connect to that emotion of it being a lie because I don't like being called a liar. I don't like accepting lies. I don't like losing. So I'm not going to accept the fact that, man, you lied. No, I didn't. And I'll stick to that to the day I die. That's how they are. Because in my mind, yeah, it's a lie, whatever you want to call it, but it's not a lie. And the women, women will go, man, I don't make sense. Well, it does make sense to me. Too bad. So I forget about the lie. I do. So, Toy, when. When the divorce pro pro process starts, guess what? As soon as you say divorce, or we're getting a divorce at that moment. And trust me when I tell you, we are already divorced. And I'm going to do what the hell I want to do. You can catch me with another woman. It don't even matter. I'm going to deny it. Because in my mind, we're divorced. So I'm already detached from you. But I don't want to see you with anybody else. But I know that you're morally fit and I'm not. So you're not going to be with anybody else, but I can. You can accept that. I can accept you doing it, but you're not going to do it because, like you said, the marriage, you're better than me. Your parents taught you better, so now you got to live it out. Yeah. Wow. So, yeah, we mentioned divorce, and we get it started. I don't care if it's on a, I don't care if it's 11 o'clock on a Sunday morning in church. I'm walking in that church divorced. Wow. So basically what you're saying is get ready for war because it's, it's going it's going down. It's going down. Wow. Yeah. And if it divorce takes a year, however long it takes, I'm going to chill for a few months. But when it gets closer to us going to court, I'm going to be a totally different person. And you're not going to like me. <laughs> On that note, we will wrap this up and get ready um, and prepared for um, part two. when we'll talk more about the divorce process and co-parenting. So. Thanks, Leon. Thanks so much for all of that insight. You're welcome. Anytime. I look forward to it.